Welcome everybody, Jim Lee from ClimateViewer.com here to introduce the ClimateViewer 3D and ClimateViewer 2D Global Doom Prevention Tools. These maps contain data that tracks pollution, the police state, and other activist related information, um, as well as giving you real-time access to data that uh, comes from all over the world, including satellite imagery, radar data, and live climate monitoring. So let's get started. First I want you to click on the 3D map here. This is for the PC and Macintosh only. The Google Earth plugin currently does not support uh, mobile devices. That uh, For that you're going to need the 2D map over here. We'll go over that in just a minute. So let's go ahead and click 3D. Now when you first come here, if you do not have the plugin, you're going to see a black window like this. So let's go ahead and get that installed. Just click here, download the Google Earth plugin, save, and save that wherever and run it. Let's run that. And then it's going to download and install that. So my Google Earth is now installed and it's going to ask me to refresh the page. So let's do that. And now we have Climate Viewer up and running. And you're going to see it pop up here. Usually it'll tell you the last date that I've updated it. So let's just close that. And what do we have? This is a interface for a Google Earth plugin. Up at the top you've got buttons to go back home. This video you're watching now will appear here in the instructions tab. Download, if you click that it'll take you over to Terraforming Inc. And you can actually download all of the contents of this tree here. You just come over here and there, there's all the Google Earth files. You can download those and you can view those in the mobile app as well. So now over here we have download, then we have donate. If you guys want to support me I'd really appreciate it. I'm, I'm now unemployed and <laughs> you know I've spent two and a half years making this for free. There is no advertising on here. I do not make any money so any help would be greatly appreciated especially now. Um, and then finally the about button which takes you over here to a page about me. Um, at the top over here you can toggle the logo on and off and that's the display right there in the bottom of the screen and then uh, you can make the sidebar disappear, the top bar, the bottom bar or all three at once go full screen. Over here on the left you got the sidebar this is going to be all of the Google Earth stuff here is in map overlays all of the external links are in the external link section and then we have other controls here and of course links to my three websites down here at the bottom you can just click these images down at the bottom you can see your Google Earth plugin version the current one is 7.0.2.8415 if your version says 6 or 5 then it is outdated you probably need to go to your add remove programs and either uninstall both Google Earth and the plugin or you know either or um, then come back to the website and update that way you have the latest one and these will show your uh, current resolution heading and how many people have been to the website and if you click over here there's a legal notice and that pretty much covers everything there and then finally this is the map window this is where all the magic happens um, everything in this square is the Google Earth plugin so let's go back over here now. I'm going to show you how to use the sidebar. Um, under map overlays you have a tree. Now this is my KML file. You can click anything with an underlined title. You can click it and a window will appear. This is the window that appears when you first load the website. It's right here. CV3D Database Live. Underneath that you're going to see different categories. You have featured, the radiation database, pollution and disasters, and a la carte pollution you've got what I'm doing here is I'm checking the little I'm clicking the the triangles the boxes make things appear you never want to check the box at the top of a category you want to expand it so click the little triangles like I'm doing here and then you'll see under that you'll see Fukushima Daiichi you can see the radioactive seawater I'm gonna check the box next to radioactive seawater impact map and what that's gonna do is let me see in Google Earth and 3D you can drag the slider up here and actually see when the, the cesium started leaving Fukushima and then over time it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. Really neat. So um, I'm going to uncheck that now. If you check the fracking box there, all of the fracking wells will appear over here. 
some of these files are very large. This is a, oh, I think it's about a three megabyte file. So it's depending on your internet speed, it'll take longer for these to load. But those are fracking wells, and that's a whole lot. That's about 27,000 fracking wells of the 800,000 documented. Under the radiation database, I'm checking that now, you can see at the bottom electromagnetic. That's got HARP, ionospheric heaters like HARP, low frequency transmitters like VLF stations, wind profile radars, Doppler radars, the Air Force satellite control network, missile defense radars, Star Wars SDI stuff, directed energy weapons such as laser, sodium LIDAR, and all that good stuff, international laser ranging service LIDARs, those are lasers around the world, the X-Files section, good stuff. Um, electromagnetic pulse, particle colliders, gravitational wave tech, um, all the sci-fi goodness you could possibly stand is in the electromagnetic section. If you just check the box right there, they will all appear. And there are a lot of them. A lot of high, high-powered radio transmitters, such as the Tromso array, which this big one here is called ISCAT 3D. By 2016, it's supposed to be operational. It will be 100 gigawatts. 100 gigawatts. If you click up here in the little search box, you can type anything you like, like Times Square. Click search. If you click it right now, it says HARP. Come over here. This is the HARP array. For those who are not familiar with HARP, it is a antenna array, a directed energy weapon, a research station, a radar, and much more. But this thing pumps 5.1 gigawatts of electricity directly into the sky and heats the ionosphere overhead for various purposes. You can read all about it here. I've put a lot of research into this. You can click on these and it'll show you in, um, images as well as links to data about them. Good stuff. Um, this section alone, the nuclear, Big Brother, and electromagnetic took me two, two years to map all of these out and create all the data in these points. So it would take you a very long time just to go through this section. Circles here, such as the Missouri Informational Analysis Center, there's their phone number, call them up. Then we have Echelon, a.k.a. the Five Eyes a.k.a. Ozcan Zuckus. Uh, you guys should look that up. That's also known as the Global Listening System. Um, that's how they you know, sneak in and listen to conversations worldwide, intercept satellite transmissions, listen to cell phone conversations and emails, and fil filter it all over to the NSA. So this is your Big Brother section. And then right above that we have the Nuclear section where you can see nuclear power plants, nuclear warheads and waste storage, and nuclear test explosions. Over here you've got, you got 440 nuclear power plants worldwide. i got to update a couple of them. Um, some of them are missing. But for the most part, they're all there. Details about them. And uh, for the nuclear explosions, you just come over here to Nevada, just to give you a little taste. That's a lot of nuclear explosions, people. That is a lot of nuclear explosions. Um, 2,053 nuclear explosions total worldwide. Lots and lots of nuclear explosions. So that's pretty insane. And most people don't know that that many happen. Um, but yeah, that many happen. That's a lot of explosions. Oh, satellite images. You can actually track satellites in 3D. And this is real time, by the way. And this is the exact same uh, feed that the military uses. So... These are very, very real satellites. Very cool. You zoom in. Let's go full screen. The external that link section is section's more of the same. It's a uh, content similar to what you have here. You've got global alerts such as the RSO EDIS. If you click that, it'll appear in a pop-up window. Depending on your monitor size, this may appear full screen. You can zoom, you can scroll through it and global incident map you get the picture so we have earthquake monitoring iris earthquake browser this is going to be like a one-stop shop for everything you could possibly want to find um, out some real-time data on or some information such as radiation monitoring the radiation network map um, things like that 
If you uh, know of a really good website that's not currently in my external link section, please email that over to me. I will put it in there. So enjoy that section. Down at the bottom of the controls, let me hit reset camera so you can see what I'm doing here. This turns the sun on and off. You got 3D buildings. If you hover over anything on this application, it'll tell you what it is. So you hover over it, show roads. Let's turn that on. Show 3D terrain. Uh, let's show the scale. That'll make one appear down here. Information, little mini map. You got the grid, the latitude and longitude lines, atmospheric glow, the controls. You can turn those on and historical imagery. And what this will allow you to do is say you're right here. You can come up here and look at it over time. Very cool. So that'll let you uh, preview the past. Let's uncheck all those. And I'm going to go up here to the search box. We're going to fly back to Harp. When I hit search, it's going to say, here's the address. If you click OK, it's going to add a place mark to the map. That map marker is here. I can drag it with my left mouse button. Not sure how it's going to work on the Mac. I, I don't have a Mac. <laughs> um, but if you alt click, you can edit the place mark and you can type whatever you want in there. OK. Move it where you want it. There's Harp. And then you can hit the save icon here and that will allow you to save a KML file that you can open in Google Earth at your leisure. You can come in here and you can control click and it'll give you the address, the closest address to it. There's the address. And then you can save all those to a file. You can zoom in to any road, generally speaking. And once you zoom all the way in, you can go into street view and actually see the heart building. There you go. So that pretty much covers everything on here. Um, I think we have. Here's my uh, social links. This is my Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Check these out. If you want to get updates, please share this with your friends. Um, there's also a theme switcher. This will remember your theme. So you just click here and it'll change all the colors. I think that's fun. Kind of like this one too. That looks really neat. Um, the default is, I believe, dot love. If you want to get back to that, it will screw up your share buttons after you change it. Go figure. But once you refresh the page, everything will be back to normal. So, um, like I said, I taught myself how to program. Um, I, I barely know what I'm doing. I was able to put this together for you guys. And, uh, you know, there may be a couple bugs. If you get bugs, send me a message and I'll, I'll get it worked out. So, let's go back to home. And let's check out the 2D real quick. This is for everybody else. Um, the, the 3D one only works in the PC and Mac, but this one will work on uh, PC, Mac, Linux, mobile, iPad, um, iPhone, Android. Down here in the bottom, there's a button that says click uh, Climb of Your Mini Menu. Just click it, and then you can scroll through this. It's exactly the same content that was in the other one. Some stuff does not display on this map, so I have to keep it simple. But, um, for example, Bayou Corn, Louisiana Sinkhole, you check this box. It will load the KML file and fly you to it. Um, uncheck the box, it will disappear. Scroll down here. Well, I'd like to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. Um, I hope you enjoy Climate Viewer. It's uh, just a project of mine that's taken you know the last couple years to just throw together. Um, I hope that it raises awareness of a lot of critical issues. And if you'd like to see your issue uh, appear here, you know, just give me an email at jim at climateviewer.com or hit me up on Facebook, Twitter. Um, again, you know, this is a completely free service. There's no advertising on the website at all. Um, I'm doing this as a public service. And if you could help me out by donating, I'd really appreciate it. I got laid off on the 25th and uh, I have a wife and a child and, uh, very scary future. So enjoy the, the program. I'm not going to be able to update the, as much um, over the near future. And hopefully I will be able to find a job or something and make some more free time to work on this project for now. Signing off, Jim Lee.